Hello, my name is Hiroja Scheib, and you are watching Satoshi's Treasure Hunters. And huzzah! Happy Clue Day. Today, June 27th, the Freedom Key has uh, dropped, and you have a clue. Uh, we'll get into that uh, towards the end of the episode. I will make a time marker for that for you, but I just really want to address the new hunters uh, that have come to the Satoshi Treasure hunt game uh, seeking to obtain some fortune for themselves so let me break down to you uh, what the game is about uh, what the prize is and how you can obtain uh, the prize itself like the game mechanics if you will so let's get into it so on April 16th through a system called the Blockstream satellite and I will talk about it in a moment a message was broadcast through that system in which it unveiled a game. And this game would entail for individuals to be able to obtain a Bitcoin prize in the value of 1 million USD. And how they'll be able to obtain this prize is using unique skill sets of cryptography, networking, you know, uh, group work, feats of labor, um, I'll get into the message, but different techniques and methodologies to obtain what will be called keys. In total, there will be 1,000 keys have been made, and I will break down why it is as part of the message. And for any individual hunter or groups or clans, if you will, all they have to do is obtain only 400 out of the 1,000 keys. So it could be the first 400, or it could be 400 out of 600 keys that have been released, any combination thereof, to obtain the prize of Bitcoin. So let's read the message, and then I'll break down the components. So, <clears throat> welcome, Hunter. This message should reach you at the middle of the fourth month of your calendar year in the year 2019. If you're reading this and something has led you to search for things which bring excitement to an otherwise predictable world. What you're reading is the first clue in a grand hunt. It's not the first hunt, nor will it be the last one. But this is a hunt is mine, and, it's, and so it is to me that you must prove yourself. The treasure which will belong to the most successful hunters in their clan is neither gold nor jewels nor the pieces of worthless paper that pass for money in this sad age. Instead, it is Bitcoin. A digital treasure forged from deep mathematical truths in the amount equal to 1 million USD. I have shattered this Bitcoin treasure into 1,000 pieces using the splitting magic of the wizard Shamir. To reassemble it, you, must, you or your clan must find exactly 400 of these pieces and meld them back together using Shamir's spell recombination. Once you have done so, the treasure will be irrevocably yours. To test the resolve, courage, intelligence, and savvy of would-be hunters, I will provide clues as to the location of these 1,000 key fragments at, and it gives the website, every so often. Some keys will acquire a deep knowledge of certain subjects. Others will simply require the ability to travel to more remote locations or perform feats of strength. The difficulty will increase until I'm satisfied that I found a group of hunters worthy of taking the prize. However, my first three keys are available to anyone who can make a simple journey to one of the following location, locations planet side. Of course, if you have an understanding of photography, you might be able to get these keys with, without going there. The first key will appear at these four, four locations at April 16th, local time, noon. The second key will appear at these four locations, and is a grid coordinates here, at April 17th, local time, noon. And the third key will appear at these uh, grid locations at April 17th, local time, 12 p.m. Good hunting. Okay, so let's break this down. You probably are unfamiliar with Shamir. Uh, it's a, he is a programmer, a cryptographer, if you will, who came up with a mathematical process of she secret sharing. And basically what, it, what is being done is <clears throat> the private key to a Bitcoin address. Bitcoin address has two components. It has the public key that everybody knows where you can send re and receive um, funds from. And the private key is the key to access it. Think of the public address like your address on the front of your door. And the private key is the sole access of you opening the door and having access to your home. 
Only you should have your private key. If you don't own your private key, you don't own your Bitcoins. And what the game makers have done is basically use this mathematical principle that has been around for decades. Uh, as they said, shattered it into a thousand components. And one of the principles of this mathematical principle is you can, you don't have to have all the pieces to be able to read the information, if you will. You just need a certain set amount. In this case, they've set it to 400 pieces. Any of these 400 pieces, it could be piece one, piece 10, piece 30, piece 40, you know, skipping around here, uh, piece six, 644. And if you have 400 of these components, 400 of these keys, you combine it together, that grants you the private address that will allow you to unlock the public address. Now, you don't need, and this bit a point of contention since the game is lost, the public address in order to access um, the Bitcoin. You just need the private address. You input it in uh, any of the various wallets, of Bitcoin wallets out there. I would do your research before entering the private key so that you're not getting hacked, scammed, or anything like that, and then you'll be able to unlock the wealth. Now, messages have been going through the system called the Blockstream Satellite. Um, there hasn't been a one, I would say, in the last month or so, but there is a website that has been keeping track called The Hunt Is On, and I have a link to everything here in the show notes that allows for people to know which of these particular uh, keys have or clues if you will have been broadcast on the satellite so you can go and know what it is um, <clears throat> that's one method that the game makers have uh, made their uh, information available the other is if you go directly to the, the website Satoshi Treasure Hunters you can enter your email subscribe to their mailing list and then they will announce the next clue drop now initially when the game was started it was like once a week on a sunday and then they've kind of varied it a little bit but recently i would say with it as you can see from the dates here starting with the 19th they're having keys dropping in quite rapid fashion for the simple reason that the game is only supposed to take about a year to do that's what the game makers have planned so it started um in april April 22nd, I believe is the date. Let me double check that. April 16th, I'm sorry. April 16th, so the day after tax day here in the States. And I believe the message was actually broadcast April 15th. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the game is supposed to take um, a year. Now, some of the clue drops will have multiple keys attached to them and I will go through each of the different keys. Uh, some keys are, are single keys and they come in a variety of different fashions. So um, let me explain the different fashions there are. So the J key, the Bismuth key, and the Maru key were the first three keys that were launched. They are called what you can consider geolocation keys. You have to, in essence, go to a physical location to obtain the information. Now, the game makers for these first three keys have made the option where you did not have to physically go to that place or location. And the individual that solved that for, for us was uh, John Cantrell. He actually solved the first three keys within like four hours of their them been launching and the message being out there or being at least being aware of it. I have a link in the show notes to his breakdown on how he did that. So if you're new to the game, you want to kind of understand what it is you're getting through or going through, if you will. These first three keys kind of give you an insight to of some kind of expectation. He reveals his mythology, how he was able to do it, as well as the information, the keys themselves. So you have the first three keys, which were geolocation keys, as well as a Cartography keys and a number of these different keys in fact are fit that mold um, The fourth key the Lopon key Was one of these keys uh, You had to basically if you're familiar with text adventure games and I actually did a video about text adventure games 
Um, they're, they're very early games. Think of Oregon Trail. Um, yeah, Oregon Trail is a pretty, pretty big one. Zork, you might have heard that, that mentioned um, in the lexicon or in the culture. There are these text-based adventure games where you basically input simple commands like go left, go right, go up, go down, go to the valley, open the door. And you have to base your information on what you're supposed to do with your character by the narrative, the actual text given to you. Now, this has caused some issues, and I want to talk about that again with the um, my weekly update about the Nirvana key, uh, which was solved, and some of the game mechanic issues. I'm not going to get into that and overwhelm you, but much of this game is based off of the history of games themselves, as well as the history of photography, Bitcoin, and even a little bit of the personal history, it seems, of the game makers themselves. So... If you read this first clue, follow the crazy rabbit. Congratulations to hunters who congregated the locations in my first transmission and found the first keys of the hunt. A hearty congratulations as well to the few who realized that the travel and meat space was not entirely necessary to find these keys. Uh, you're also going to see a lot of cyberpunk references. Um, I also did a video about that, um, about uh, Burning Comb, a review of, of, of that, and I will be doing with uh, William Gibson. Um, who has an influence in the concept of cyberpunk uh, and, and a lot of influence on some of these text adventure games as well. You'll see certain types of cultural references that you kind of have to kind of key in on because they, they will help you understand how to solve the clue. So while parts of the hunt are solitary endeavors, most of the time you will need to work together as a clan to pull ahead. This next challenge is solvable for any individual, only at a considerable expense. For a group, it's nothing but a simple test of a cohesion and trust. In my hunt, as in life, remember that nothing is what it seems. So you click on the clue link linkage here. And it gives you this GIF. When you broke down the GIF, um, it gave you a website. You go to this website and you had to purchase this digital egg. And then this digital egg... I gave you like a QR code and you had to figure it out and from there you're able to get the password and get linkage to the particular key. I have a link in the show notes and I will show you of all the keys that have been made publicly available that I have access to as well um, as uh, the the link to the, the, the past to the past page and the past rights to these particular keys. You also have some time sensitive um, keys. One of the first ones was the hunted key, where you had to go to a geolocation and then you had to bring an object. Uh, each of these, uh, and it still can link on it even though the, the key is considered done. Uh, the first field agent was the person that everyone was able to find. Uh, the people met up with them in France. They had to give them this object, uh, this particular book here. Um, forgot what this book was, um, but you give him the book, he gave you the key. Uh, the second field agent is the, the um, Burning Chrome book. Also a geolocation. So you had to figure out from the wanted poster, if you will, Figure out what his location was. Um, a lot of people figured out that he was um, from downloading this picture and going through the image that in the background there was an image of China, which hinted the country he was in. But nobody was able to find this field agent or the third field agent. And in this case, uh, Burning Chrome, which, which is a collection of short stories by William Gibson, you had to give him this book and then he would give you the key. <coughs> And this particular uh, key, uh, the game makers stated that they are putting the uh, other two field agents' keys back in the vault, so you're not able to acquire that particular key yourself. But some of these keys, like the cryptographic keys, you're going to still be able to go to the web pages and enter the passphrase. For example, um, the ASAP key. If you look at this key, you can obviously right off the bat know that the 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 color grid around this particular image 
big clue. It has to be, do with some kind of code. And in fact, there there is a code to it. And if you were able to immediately recognize it, it might be because you're a big New Order fan. And New Order is a big, you know, what is it called? First wave, new wave, new wave band from the early 80s. A mega influence on a, a lot of music and a lot of artists. And they had developed this particular code for their um, albums and uh, released it. And it was a color code code that basically spelled out the band's name and their, their album title. And then you have The Rabbit and the Tortoise, which is an Aesop fable. I personally didn't realize this considered an ambiguous story simply because depending, I guess, one's perspective and over time, uh, which character where you're supposed to emphasize or a lesson you're supposed to learn a lesson about the hare or a lesson about the tortoise um, so it's considered an ambiguous story so this particular um, key you can still actually so I have a link in the show notes that I have to share with you of all the different keys I've made, made, made public um, the ASAP key you can actually still access the key itself so if you wanted to learn how to figure things out for yourself and follow along, you can do so. Like go back through the different clues and figure it out or use any of the different breakdown uh, examples that people have published on how they solve any particular key. Now, typically with the crypto cryptographic uh, keys and typically with a majority of the keys, unless you're going to a geolocation and physically meeting somebody, you're gonna go online and you're gonna get a, a page like this that says decrypt this page, enter the passphrase. So it's kind of essentially the final step to obtain the key. We are going to copy. And voila. Now, the key page looks like this. You will see a QR code that you can actually scan. And then you have the actual uh, mathematical fragment of the key itself. Many of the keys, not all the keys, the last couple keys haven't had this, have <coughs> This little, little kind of almost another narrative story down here. Uh, those who came before me lived through their vacations. From the past until completion, they'll turn away no more. Which my understanding is a lyric from uh, a New Order song. I believe it's Blue Monday. If I rem recall uh, the solution for this key correctly. And so even the narrative down on the below, some people have been keeping track of because there, it could lead in essence to another key because it's, they're kind of telling like a story within a story, if you will, when it comes to the hunt itself. Now, the game makers have stated that a number of these keys. Oops. Will remain up and be solvable for people unless specified for their for their time limit purposes. In this case, for example. Um, the room key which is found. Uh, the exhibit is only open to July 7th so it might not be possible to still obtain the key even though it, it, there's an indication that the key is actually outside the location of the place so it might in fact still be up. So that might be something that you can still actually go to if you can go to the exhibit space and go outside the building in that area and find the actual uh, key itself, the clue for the key, the passphrase, if you will. <clears throat> but there are other ones like the Nirvana key, which are geolocation keys where you have to physically go and meet somebody in Rashik, India, the city, and uh, meet them at Iris Tea House, 1 p.m. local time on June 27th. And then it's done. So if you didn't get there on time, wrong date or whatever, you're not going to be able to obtain that particular key called the Nirvana key. So there is a mixture of different mythologies available here to for everyone to participate. 
Uh, networking, I think, is going to be a very big key if you have a wide breadth of people you know around the world globally or know somebody who does and through your friend circle are able to get people to go, you know, to India. Uh, Taipei is going to have a mini hunt as well as um, I don't, wouldn't be surprised, I don't doubt it, that there will be some key drops, uh, geolocation key drops within the Taipei area. Uh, that's something that's going to be coming out next week. That's something that was hinted by the game makers through Twitter. I have uh, in the show notes all the official um, <clears throat> outlets, like their website, their Twitter handle, the telegram, to where you can obtain the information uh, from the game makers. Uh, and I also have a list of the official people who have come forward as part of the Satoshi Treasure Hunt, Dobi uh, One. Uh, Dusi Wang and um, Eric Meltzer are like the three key ones. You see them on Twitter all the time. I have their Twitter handles. They make uh, some of the announcements. And then there's the official uh, Satoshi Treasure Hunters site or the Hunt itself Twitter account, which makes the um, also makes uh, clue announcements and clue hints if there need to be. Or if you need to ask a question, like uh, some people thought that the room key might have been sabotage because... There was an emphasis about the exhibit, but didn't realize that the key was outside the exhibit. So <clears throat> there's stuff like that um, going on. And the game makers have stated themselves, particularly when their issue was considered about the sabotage of the room key, that if it's proven to be sabotage, they will make the key public for everybody. That's it's not as uncouth, if you will, to be sabotaging, uh, particularly with these geolocations that take a lot of effort for people to go um, to these places, particularly if, uh, you know, somebody doesn't live there, they live a couple cities away or different providence or different states and they're driving in hours on in or flying in for something like that to, ha to happen. Now, there are supposed to be some kind of feats of strength or feats of labor, if you will. I guess the hunted key can kind of fit with that because you had to give an object to the field agent um, at a geolocation, but so far there has not been a key that meets that quite meets that criteria. Many of them have been geolocations where you had to go to a spot, or um, cryptographic keys where you had to use different um, methodologies to be able to obtain, um, break down the clue, and be able to obtain the key. Now the price. This is from SD uh, Hunt News. It's uh, Satoshi Treasure Hunt News Analysis Discussion. It's a, a fairly new website uh, about the Satoshi Treasure Hunt. I have a link to the public clans that already exist out there. They're looking for members. I also have a link to um, YouTube channels like myself that have been talking about uh, the Treasure Hunt uh, and breaking down. Um, many of them are devs, so developers, if you will, so they have this. The, the cryptographic skill set to kind of explain and break down the different methodologies that people were able to utilize to solve for the different clues, um, as well as some of the private clans you might hear about. Because even though initially like 60,000 people have signed up for the newsletter, um, and there's a couple open and out there public clans, there's a lot of different groups just working quietly in the background that we know nothing about. For example, the room key. I mean, most people found out it being people people that are actively engaged in the public channels that are out there or in their groups didn't know it was solved because no one publicly announced that they solved it because the game makers acknowledge that it has been found. So when a key is found, typically I, I would be assuming that the URL for, URL for the cryptographic keys gets pinged, if you will, that someone's been on the site enter the passphrase, boom, boom, access the key, indicating that it has been found. Uh, currently right now, the Earth key, the Abung key, the Cult key, the Nirvana key actually has been found, which just hasn't been updated, the Zero Knowledge key, the Philanthropist key, which has a time date of July 31st, and the Distance key and the newly released key have not been solved. There's also two additional keys that are not on the site. One is called the business card key, 
The business card key is you you have to figure out as well as be able to meet Eric Meltzer, Jesse Wang, Dovi Wan, and 15 other people and obtain these uh, business cards. And they have uh, fragments of the key that allow you to, or passphrases or something that's on their business card that when you combine all 18 together, like collecting Pokemon or baseball cards or trading cards or the first run of your favorite comic book uh, single issues, if you will, of a series, uh, or even better, you know, when they bundle it up into uh, um, the first volume for a particular series, they they will allow you access to a, to a special business card key. And so they're pretty good, like, announcing like where they're going to be and if they're going to have their cards out but you still have to use some kind of clues or hints to the social networking schemes if you will to be able to figure out who the other 15 people are okay now on to the prize pool so satoshi treasure hunt does have this thing that most people consider what could be the actual physical bitcoin amount um, that the game makers may possess in a wallet. They have not publicly released the prize address. Um, they have stated that it's supposed to be part of a key. And I, some people have qualms about it because most, if you're new to this community, most, this is not the first time there has been um, a hunt or um, cryptography used to prize pools or giveaways or figure this out or solve this solution and you get this Bitcoin. Uh, this is, it's been part of the community since pretty much the very beginning. The most famous, I would say, is the Satoshi Nakamoto painting in which it took three years to solve. So there was like, eventually there was like maybe a total of five Bitcoin. I think initially when it was put up, there was four Bitcoin, Bitcoin in the uh, painting. Um, people donated to the prize and eventually I think came up to close to five bitcoin and someone was able to solve um solve this um, cryptographic puzzle um so most in the public address was released most these type of hunts already already have the public address out there for people to see yes the funds are available yes the funds exist because this is a very paranoid trust but verify community and for now for the most part people have allowed the game makers to cook but I think as time marches on, that public address not being released is going to be some serious issues. <clears throat> We've already had one clan publicly um, quit called the Magellan clan, but they were kind of goofy anyways. I'm not going to get into the whole drama of it, but there, there are people who have left the game because of that. Um, there are people who have left the game for other reasons as well. But one of the, I'm just talking about just in general, the public address not being released to indicate they do in fact have a Bitcoin address filled up to the equivalent of $1 million in USD. So, as you can see here um, from the new site, uh, the original message said, said the price is in Bitcoin in amount equal, equal to 1 million USD. On April 13th, 2019, the value of one Bitcoin was 5,000 um, $66.87. This means the price is 197 BTC. The price of Bitcoin was lower for the previous six months, so it's possible the price is more than 197 BTC. For the sake of the tracking, the current value of the price will stick with 197 BTC. So, since they shattered the private key for the Bitcoin address, this means that the price, the minimum amount being held could be somewhere as low as 197 and depending on when considering the time and effort and the different natures of the different the time of different types of clues that are available um, the fact that these geolocation sites and they have people on site to be able to give people keys or at least establish um, whatever hint is necessary for uh, to put these keys available for people some time and effort has been put into, into this game um, Eric Meltzer has been in the media. He's kind of the spokesperson. He has stated that they've been kind of working on this for almost two years. So it could be as high as 300 um, in Bitcoin. 
but I don't think it'd be anything lower than I would say 195, 190 to be honest with you. So anywhere from like 190 to about f the lowest when Bitcoin was around 3,000, like 30, like around 320. And that is important considering the value of Bitcoin has fluctuated significantly since then. And since this game is going to take about a year to complete, that value of Bitcoin can easily dramatically increase. It could triple, it can quadruple, it can be whew, exorbitant. It really depends on when the solution is made. So I have a link. Um, someone has already took the time and effort to figure out what potentially could be the different Bitcoin addresses through the blockchain looking basically around 200 you know being pretty conservative and looking at addresses that have been created uh, before the the game was launched and potentially could be in essence the prize amount for um, bitcoin and again i have on here the um the available keys that I have available for me for everyone to I don't know how it's supposed to look um, for everyone to be able to look and kind of catch up again I, I highly encourage you to go through the so show notes and go to the different official sites out there to see how these keys were solved to see how everyone else has done it um, to see their information don't just take it from me at all so I'll, the only thing I have to say, to, uh, and I know it's a bit of an information dump for anyone who's coming into this game, it's not too late. It's, it's a bit of a marathon. There's still time to get these keys, catch these Pokemon, if you will, um, to catch up, to get involved, to become part of a clan or form your own group, uh, gather your friends, gather your pals, seek people out, um, and find and figure out for yourself um you know these different keys what it is you're looking for many people you know are here for the fun of it they like breaking down puzzles they are not really terribly concerned about the prize money itself it's like oh that's nice but really it's just you know i was the one who solved like the earth key which hasn't been solved yet or the ubon key is like th those kind of points they take the joy and pleasure out of being able to s make you know make the solution happen and also just forming and building a community uh within this group about you know <clears throat> about this hunt uh, making friends having, you know having jokes trying to figure out who can go where and when and things of that nature um the other thing too um there are mini hunts that happen these mini hunts are these small level prizes where you could obtain um, Bitcoin along the ride, if you will, to the major prize. There was one that was completed in New York, which was 500. There's one that's supposed to be launched in Taipei that's a thousand. Um, the zero knowledge key, um, the prize money is not directly coming from the um, game makers themselves, but potentially you could earn $70,000 for your clan and uh, or as an individual, if you will. But along the way, you can also obtain um, three additional keys, as is stated in this clue. So there's ways to make money along the way. Um, I guess even um, holding on to the keys and not um, publicly releasing them could also be a way of making money um, as more keys get released and they obtain value where people have to be able to combine um, certain keys to you know enough of, enough of the keys to get to the prize amount that if not all the clans have certain keys you know it can get really tricky and dicey down the, down the road where you might need a certain set of keys um, you're six away and you might put a bounty out there there's those different types of things that could potentially happen with this game so on to the, the, the clue of the day. So the clue is called, or the key is called the freedom key. 
The clue is not in the EU. In the Danish capital city of Copenhagen, the happiest country in the world, Freetown, Christiania is the heaven of hippie, the subject of a vast number of academic studies, and kind of a looming moment to Danish tolerance. Next Monday on July 7th, I mean July 1st, 2019, agents will travel there and pass a key near Freetown, Christiania, uh, Perskande, uh, 1422 Copenhagen at local time, 11 a.m. Uh, Gajot. So there you have it, another geolocation um, key where you have to meet with an agent at a designated time, place, and location to be able to obtain the key. So I found the Indian one to be fun. Um, I helped participate to be able to obtain that particular key. I will do the same thing with this one. I, I like these geolocation keys because, again, it, it causes the clans to kind of form up and reach out into the network. It's not a crypto cryptographic thing. It's about who you know, where they are in the world, you know, where in the world is Pond San Diego, that type of a deal. And it allows people to be able to participate, say, hey, I know somebody, blah, 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 in this location. Cool, can they get out there? Let me check. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, they can. What is the time and date? Okay, yes, they can be there. That type of deal and be able to contribute. Um, still waiting for the pizza labor and stuff like that and other different forms of keys coming out that will allow for um, different levels of people to be able to participate. So, my name is Arosa Shai. This is Satoshi's Treasure Hunters. Welcome new hunters. Welcome new clans that are forming. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, enjoy the hunt. Enjoy the game. Uh, until next time, the hunt is on. Thank you.